Welcome to Space Action Podcast, a division of Space Action Heroes, a webcomic you can find at spaceactionheroes.com. I am Chris Carson. Hey, where's DC? Where the fuck? DC's not here, man. Who the hell are you? <laughs> so to our regular listeners, um, we've been promising you guys Stranger Things uh, for a while, and we will get to it, but DC is off on vacay. So in the meantime, I am joined by special guest Samantha Saxena again. Hello! From our last time you were on it, we did uh, Battlestar Galactica. We sure did. And so what are we doing this time? We are doing Jim Henson's The Storyteller. Cue clip. No soul returns from my kingdom. Love is stronger than death. <laughs> Nothing is stronger than death, little musician. Fear me. I am the bold audience at the theater. A knock at the door when you least expect it. I am the one whose name must not be spoken for fear I hear it and sit next to you. I am the pain in your arm at four in the morning, the headache that will not shift. The sour taste in your mouth of everything you ever did. I am waiting, little musician, and one day I shall come for you also. Then you will see your wife once more. So, you've never seen the storyteller before. No, I actually hadn't even heard of it, to be honest with you. Didn't even know what it was? Didn't even know it existed. I watched it when I was a kid. And um, the episode about death scared the hell out of me as a tiny little kid. Mm -hmm. And I vaguely remember the rest. And then it came out on DVD in like 2003. And I rushed out and bought it and watched the hell out of it in 2003. So if it scared the hell out of you when you were a kid, why did you run to go buy it when it came out on DVD? Because I remember it was fantastic, but I just remembered it scared the shit out of me. And then Mm. when it came out on DVD, I was in my 20s. I was like, I want to revisit this thing. Uh. It's a kid's show. Clearly it won't scare me as an adult. And it doesn't. It's a little unsettling, (laughs) though, that death thing. I found it very dark, the entire series. It's super dark. Yeah, it's not your um, Disney fairy tale, I I guess guess you could say. For people who don't know what the storyteller is, um, briefly, it is Jim Henson produced, Jim Henson Company uh, retelling of fairy tales from Mm -hmm. Germany and, like, Greece, like the old Brothers Grimm fairy tales. Yeah. And hosted by John Hurt in crazy makeup. And apparently, as the story goes, um, Jim Henson wanted a puppet host, but then one of the production designers said, hey, we can make a person look like a puppet, and we'll get a better performance out of it for the host of the, the, the titled storyteller character. And then they got John Hurt. And then the dog, voiced by Brian Henson... And that's his kid? That's, Brian Henson's is his kid? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who is, and I, if in some weird twist of fate, Brian Henson ever ends up listening to this, I apologize, but his not nearly as talented kid in terms of voice acting, because I don't think he's as good of a, a voice actor as his okay. father was. So he says this now, but for the past week, he's been doing the dog voice. But the dog voice is adorable. <laughs> but all, like, when he took over for Kermit after Jim Henson died, it, oh. it, Kermit sounded so bad. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, he, okay. he's, I don't think he has the range. And I think he gave up on Kermit when Disney bought the Muppets, and now um, it's just... Yeah, I don't blame him. Who the, who the fuck ever. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so yeah, the first season is nine episodes, where they retell, like, Cinderella. Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast, but it's the like based on the original yeah. fairy tale, so they're completely different. But there's the seed of, of like what Disney did with them. Yeah, I guess that's yeah. Later on, yeah. And then season two was um, Michael Michael Gambon, uh, Dumbledore two was the host. Uh, he was the new storyteller set in like ancient Greece, telling four yeah. Greek uh, mythology Myth. stories, yeah. which is like the Minotaur. Uh, Icarus and his plast- or wax wings. Mm-hmm. What the hell were the other two? We just watched uh, them. Odysseus. Odysseus. Uh, with, and his lady friend. I don't yeah, remember her name. Who, uh, it's the whole, um, like, uh, that 
that biblical family leaving the burning city of like Sodom or Gomorrah, if they looked back, they turned to salt. Clearly there was an or- a point of origin for both those stories because it was him going to the underworld. Mm-hmm. And if he looked back at his dead wife, she'd get pulled back into the underworld mm-hmm. and then he looks back and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, back. and then there was Theseus and the Minotaur. And the min- min- Minotaur. Min- min- mini Minotaur. I-, I don't know how you say it. Is it Minotaur or Minotaur? I'm going to guess it's sort of like potato, potato. Ah. Minotaur, Minotaur, mm-hmm. Monotaur. Monotaur. <laughs> Monotaur. Yeah, yeah. You're just making mode. shit up now. I am totally making shit up. <laughs> but um, let's start with season one. Yeah. So season one was the John Hurt um, fairy tale. So season one, definitely my favorite of the two seasons. And I think that... A lot um, more Muppets. Yeah. Way I think that more. was it. And uh, season one, it was still a little bit uh dark for a child i think it was fucking i can't imagine horrifying. me sitting there as a kid and watching half of the stuff that i watched um but it was a lot more consumable just because there were muppets and that dog god love that dog i really <laughs> really enjoy the dog that dog makes me want to get that type of dog which i looked it up and i've already forgotten the name like a, some kind of german pointer it's like a duber snoobel it has a really yeah. funny name <laughs> Poodle and a pointer mixed together? Yeah, what was it? It was like a poidle pointer or something. Something like Puddle, that. Puddle pointer or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're the cutest dogs ever. Uh, just look up the just, dog from, from the storyteller and yeah. what breed it was. It's a little scrappy looking yeah. kind of. And he talks like this! <laughs> and uh, we thought, like I thought in the first few episodes his voice sounded different, we noticed, but it was Brian Henson. It was, yeah. The I whole think he time. was just refining the, the dog voice. The voice. Well. Yeah. And apparently that dog came back one other time. Because um, this was a BBC show, oh, uh, was The it? Storyteller, oh, okay. and it aired in, in America under the Jim Henson Hour, if you remember that that weird like semi-variety show mm-hmm. that he had, um, and they aired through the Jim Henson Hour, and the dog, I think, showed up, I th- it was like, oh, I don't remember, I just read about this earlier today, where he was one other Jim Henson thing, I think it was just another random episode of the Jim Henson Hour. Because the Jim Henson Hour was hosted by that, or that lion, that weird yeah, white yeah, yeah. lion yeah. that was also in The Storyteller uh, for the True Bride or whoever it was. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. And uh, in one of the episodes, the dog was there instead of the white lion, just being like, ah! Yeah, yeah. And then he was interviewed for like a magazine by Rolf, the dog from The Muppets. From The Muppet Show. From The Muppet Show. Yeah. And what else? Oh, we read about that this morning, that the original show was because Jim Henson's daughter... Yeah, she was um, she was in university or something, and she was taking folk, uh, what was it folk studies or something like folklore, that? Folklore, yeah. And then she um, she kind of floated this idea by him, and the two of them came up with um, I guess the premise of the show. Just to be like a, a staying, half hour. Yeah, staying true to the to the actual fable. And they actually hired a historian to make sure that they were completely mm-hmm. accurate. Yeah. And so you can see the like, basically it's just the pre Disney stories. Because all early Disney were just these stories yeah. kind of manipulated into being fanciful Walt Disney yeah. flavored things. Yeah. And not as... not as Horrifying? I guess, yeah, horrifying, real, you know? Um, because the troll always, you know, falls to his fiery death. And people and, die left and right. Yeah. And there's really sad yeah. endings to things. Yeah. Um, and Especially then, season two, the Greek myth one. Because yeah. every single Greek, Greek myth is a tragedy, It's right? horrifying. It's weird that they make that into a child's, uh, you know, show. I wonder if it was, like, always conceived, like, because the Muppets were originally not for kids, right? They were just sort oh, of yeah. like... They weren't for adults either. They weren't like it wasn't like Happy Time Murders where they were fucking and swearing. Yeah. But yeah. they were never meant to. It was like Sesame Street was for kids, and then the Muppet Show was for adults that used like childish practices to tell hilarious stories. Mm. I wonder if the storyteller was kind of conceived the same way, and maybe I just watched it way too young. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. No. Now that I think back on the Muppet Show when they're doing, you know, when Kermit the Frog hosted the Muppet Show, mm. and then the show was about the backstage antics and whatnot. The original like seventies Muppet yeah. Show. Uh, Miss Piggy was a little fucking... She was just a floozy. She was hitting on everybody left, right, and center. She always had a frog in her throat. Yeah, she sure did. (laughs) Not even a frog, but remember all the guest stars that would come on? Oh, yeah, she was always trying to... Mac Daddy on them. I remember she was trying to bang Mark Hamill. Yeah, yeah. When they were singing the Star Wars song. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Oh, Jim Henson. (laughs) Did you know he um, came up with the Muppets when he was 18? Oh, really? Fucking Jim Henson. Really? Yeah. He was born in like 1936, and it was like 1955 was was when the Muppets were invented. But they oh, didn't okay. get a show for another 20 years, the Muppet Show. Oh. But he was running around doing the Muppets and like his short experimental films and doing Muppet 
acts when he was like 18, 19 yeah. years old. Son huh. of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess you think of puppets and associate them with kids as opposed to... Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a few. You can go on YouTube and look up early like Jim Henson experimental films and they are weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are really weird. Fucking film students. I imagine Jim Henson was probably on a lot of drugs mm. when he was young. <laughs> he was born when you said? In the It was 30s? like 1936 or something. 36? And so he would have been... I guess he would have been more like a beatnik mm. <laughs> in, the, in the 50s, a teenager mm-hmm. in the 50s. The LSD didn't exist yet, so... So he passed away in the 90s? Mm. 1990, which again, um, season one of The Storyteller, he oversaw, and then season two, he was... I think he, it was, he died during its production, because he's still listed as an executive, executive producer. Executive producer, yeah. But it was released in 1990, and he died in 1990. Okay. Which is the saddest thing ever. I read about his death this morning, and I was listening to the mm-hmm. score for The Storyteller and reading about his death, and I nearly, like, burst into tears. Oh, pumpkin. (laughs) Because it was just, like, just the description of he was feeling kind of odd, and then his estranged wife came to see him because he was coughing up blood, and he just said to her, I think I'm going to die today, and then he died that day from Mm. toxic shock syndrome from a lung infection. Poor guy. Fucking insane. Yeah. And just the, the, and again, uh, go to YouTube and look up the uh, music, the score for The Storyteller. Listen to that and read that article. And if you don't, (laughs) if you aren't moved, you're a monster. (laughs) But But he he was 60 ish when he died, I I think he was like 56 or something. 56? Well, he was 36, 46, 56, 56, 56, 56, 86. Yeah, he was like 54, 55. Mm. Hmm. That's pretty insane. Yeah. It's quite young. It it was the end of. uh, um, of an era for sure. Yeah, I he was being, quite the storyteller. I was. I. I remember not I was being shocked. into um, Jim Henson stuff after I learned that he died. I just didn't want to. I didn't care. Yeah, yeah. I was so broken by it because I yeah. was like eight, and I was well, like, "Well, he was the Jim Henson and Company, right? Yeah. I mean, he did. He had his hands on everything. Yeah. He was our our generation's Walt Disney, I would imagine. Yeah. Because when Walt died, I think half the storytelling died, right? Far less anti-Semitic, though. True. 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 <laughs> Much nicer person overall. He wasn't busting unions and yeah. hiring Nazis to host <laughs> nature shows, unlike a certain Walt. Mm. Walt. You know, I remember. Um, now, I'm only half remembering, so please bear with me, but I was watching one of these lovely ghost hunter type TV shows. Oh, and the ghost of Jim Henson? I don't know. I don't remember if it was Jim Henson, but it was in the building that the Jim Henson company was founded in. That's horrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember who the ghost was, though, now. Even though it would be adorable, like an exorcist type thing, but then the person like shakes and shimmies and then Kermit's voice comes out yeah, of their yeah. mouth. Like, oh, they hey, guys. <laughs> inhabit guys. Kermit the Frog. Yeah. And, yeah. That would be uh, adorable mm-hmm. and hilarious and really sad at the same I time. I don't remember anything actually happening in the Ghost Hunters show. Like, they I don't think. do. Yeah they moved anything or anything like that but i i remember that they were in the building we were talking last night about one of the ghost hunter shows that accidentally uploaded an episode where they <laughs> where they were walking around the corner and the guy opened the door too quickly and they're like oh hey jim you open the whole door too quickly do it again and they came around the corner like whoa the door just opened they're such horse shit oh, but so much fun to watch so ridiculous um i want to talk about the episode that scared me as a kid yeah. The Soldier and Death. So So it was based on a Russian folktale. It was Russian. Mm-hmm. And it was basically a soldier comes back and he has three biscuits. And he gives a biscuit to a guy who trades his whistle. Like yeah. his ability to whistle. And the guy whistled like shit before. Yeah, he before he actually it. was going. Yeah. And then he was afterwards. Yeah. And it was Muldoon from Jurassic Park. That was that was the soldier. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's his line again? In Jurassic Park? Oh, clever girl. Yeah. And then this one, if it's if it's a sack, then get in it. Because <laughs> then the second time he trades his biscuit for a pair of magic playing cards, and then the third guy he comes across and he's like, "Well, it's my last biscuit, but I feel bad not giving you what I gave everyone else." And mm-hmm. then he gets a magic sack from him, and so then he goes to a town that apparently is inhabited. Uh, there's a castle on the hill inhabited by devils. And he goes and plays cards with the devils all night. Keeps winning, keeps winning, keeps winning. When the devils get angry, he says, this is my, this is my sack. Get in it. Mm-hmm. And all the devils go into it. And it's like they're compelled to get into Into it. the sack, yeah. yeah. And uh, then he captures all the devils and says, I'll let you go if you fuck off. I'm keeping one of your feet. And so he becomes like lord of the castle. And then it jumps like 20 years in the future where his son is dying. I think it's his son or his wife or his son. I don't remember which. I think it was his wife. His wife was yeah. dying. 
and he Maybe called it up. It was a son. Sorry. Oh no, he was the son because he, was, he says, yeah. "My wife, this is my devil." Yeah. Because he calls up one of the devils back, and the devil gives him the foot devil. The foot devil. He rips mm. his foot off, which I still think to this day that they had another plan in mind of how he was going to summon his devil, and the foot of the puppet just came off. Yeah. And they thought that was awesome. Maybe. And, and just went yeah. with it. Because his foot does just go off, and he seems so shocked by it, and yeah. then cuts right away. <laughs> but um, he's the devil gives him a glass that if you look through it, you can see death. And death's at the bottom of the of the foot of the bed. The person will live, and if yep. he's at the head of the bed, then he's going to die. And death is that's the episode directed by Jim Henson too. Mm. And death is the most terrifying fucking thing in the world. Um, it's not that terrifying. It is terrifying. <laughs> it's this horrifying little like it looks like um a gelfling, but like an What's evil. That? That's from um, Dark Crystal. Oh. It looks like a hairless, bald, evil gelfling. Okay. And it's fucking terrifying. Yeah. yeah, he's not pretty to look at no. by any means. So, and he's but... just his shocked face. And then, and I think the concept, too, because what happens is um, his king, like the guy's Muldoon's king is sick. The czar. The yeah. czar. And death's at his head. So mm-hmm. he does, like, the czar's been too good to me. I don't want him to die. So he gets death in a sack. He traps him in his magic he, sack. Well, he offers himself instead of the czar. And then he captures him in a sack. Yeah. That was his plan. So he tricks death. And I think that fucked me up as a kid, too, because then no one dies at that point. Mm-hmm. And so that was creepy. And then, like, just this, just John Hurt telling you how, like, people longed for death and the shot of all the old people just longing for death. Yeah. And imagine, like, a six year old watching this. Yeah. It was horrifying. <laughs> It's and weird. It's it a weird choice of content. And that whole episode is fucked because then he lets death go, but death's so scared of him, he won't come back to him. Mm-hmm. So the soldier's left just wandering the earth because then he even goes to hell to try to get to get into hell, and hell doesn't want him. So yeah, because de- it's the devils again. Because the They're devils like, again. Nope, fuck off, dude. And he demands like a hundred souls to take to heaven as payment to get in, and yep. then he tries to trick one of the souls to call him into the sack once they get into heaven. But once you get in heaven, you forget everything. So mm-hmm. he just is left wandering out the outskirts of the gates of heaven for all eternity. Mm-hmm. I think that conceptually messed me up as a kid. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a fucked up story. It's really fucked I, up. I question why this would have been made for children. <laughs> I see, That's why I wonder if it was. Or if they were like, we like old fairy tales were fucked up. Yeah. Kids need to, and it was the 80s, the whole dark that's 80s. That's true. Yeah. The 80s is when Batman started murdering people. Yeah. So maybe that was all part and parcel of, like, let's give kids darker, deeper stories. Yeah. But that episode scared the fuck out of me. And I honestly didn't remember any other episode, really. So when I bought it in 2003, it was like watching it brand new again. And I honestly haven't watched it again since we sat down and just ripped mm-hmm. through them all for this podcast. Yeah. Um, it, I, I enjoyed, um, which was the one, <clears throat> it was the Cinderella one, I think. No, no, no. What was um, it? The what True was Bride. Oh, with the big white lion. Yeah, with the Lay lion. down and sleep and yeah. I'll drink the river dry. That yeah. is how I want to get shit done in life. <laughs> just fall asleep just, and... Yeah, just have a troll tell me that this, that, and the other thing needs to get done. And then a giant lion comes out of nowhere and he's like, <laughs> dude, just take a nap. I got this shit for you. On the downside, though, the troll did beat her with the contradiction stick. Yeah. Until she was black and blue. When they were talking about the contradiction stick, um, I read a... Um, it was a Deadpool comic book, and he's a pirate in this comic book, and he has a teaching stick. Is it, do you think he kind yeah. of snagged that I, from Storyteller? I don't know. I don't know, but uh, but I enjoyed the the contradiction stick as well as the teaching stick. <laughs> I'm going to get myself a stick. A contra- and you have to yeah. beat people black and blue? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lord. I think I could do this. And I think, yeah. Wait, so what, what was, do you think that, is there any other contemporary story that lines up to that one? To the, um, the True Bride or whatever she was called? I don't even remember. We should have had yeah. the episode titles written down before we started recording. Yeah, but we should have. It was um, it was the one with the big white lion from G- the Jim Henson Hour. <laughs> yeah, um, and I don't think it lined up to anything Disney ish that that I could relate yeah. it to. It was just Cinderella, and what else was there? There was Cinderella. Yeah. Who who, who was called. Um, like suit shooper or something. Yeah, shoot shooper. She had a really weird name, and the Cinderella one was really weird because she, tales of incest. Yeah, and, she was yeah. forced to marry her dad, so animals made her like a beast costume. Yeah, so she looked like Bigfoot. So then she she fled her kingdom, and then this dickhead prince who's like know your place and is like kicking her around and smacking servants and things is the hero prince. Yeah, and that's and he, who she falls in love with. Yeah, and she, he never learns his lesson. No. Really? No, no, no. He just recognizes her, the yeah. Bigfoot beast, as being the hot chick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a 
did question the, the morality behind what some was of that? these stories. Was that German? Was that one German? Um, I think it might have been German. Yeah? Yeah. The, the majority were German. I think there was some other... Because I think a lot of them were grim fairy tales. Yeah. But I, then again, grim fairy tales were collected fairy tales from all, all over. over. Yeah. So I guess they probably all show up in grim at some point. And I point. feel like um, Cinderella <clears throat> was an originally a French fairy tale. I could be She's completely French? wrong, but... Um, I have the... Uh, they just released a few years ago, and I snagged it, was the original translations of grim fairy tales. Oh, yeah? So they're super dark and twisted. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was reading a couple of them, and I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, th- these poor kids back then. Or maybe they need that. I don't know. Well, it, it <laughs> builds a sense of fear, I guess, right? Yeah. And there's nothing that keeps you in line more than thinking that there's going to be fucking death at yeah. the foot of your bed maybe re- the head of your bed like usually religion is used for that so maybe yeah. maybe the Germans are like <clears throat> yeah fuck <laughs> this god guy we're just going to scare the shit out of kids um, because I think back in the day did did the Germans actually have like a religion that they were they Christian I, am, I don't know I imagine because they were like I'm part German so please don't at me but they were fucking cavemen until Alexander conquered them and brought them civilization so I don't know they were pro- I don't know what they were worshiping before Alexander and then they would have gone to Greek gods and then I don't know when Christianity kind of took them over but yeah. it's there now. Well cuz um um at the height of the Roman Empire I'm pretty sure the Germans were um uh the Visigoths, right? Yeah. Um, and there was Germanic tribes that would um yeah, they try were, they and get in on the savage loot. as fuck, yeah. Yeah, the booty. Um, but that that um, reminds me of season two of um, The Storyteller. Which is Greek Myths, hosted yeah. by Dumbledore 2. So Dumbledore 2 is in this giant labyrinth. The labyrinth. The labyrinth, with, with the dog, the cute, cute as fuck dog. A dog whose breed didn't exist until the 1800s, by the way. Okay. And is now in ancient <laughs> Greece. I don't think they thought... He's also a puppet, though. He's also a puppet. So let's give him that. And he talks like this! <laughs> but, um... But so this guy's just kind of walking around a labyrinth and he randomly finds shit and he puts it in a sack. So he was essentially just a looter. Well, I think because the final episode felt like the first episode. So I don't know if they were intentionally like, oh, this is, this is the last episode. So we need to explain how he got here. Mm. Or if they just flipped them for, for airing it because they do that all the time with yeah. shows. Because like, the, first, when they were... the final one, he's actually being chased by guards being called like criminal thief. And he tumbles into the into the labyrinth. Right, yeah. But um, when they were doing the Odysseus one, mm-hmm. um, he found the uh, his liar, 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 liar. Yeah. Liar. Remember um, the dog's like liar. He's like, yeah. this is a liar. He's yeah. like, Oh. And then he he like shoved it in his bag. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was just looting the place. He was totally a looter. <laughs> well done, Jim Hudson <laughs> Company. This is after Jim's dead. Yeah. And there's barely any puppets in season two. There's none. Absolutely none. Like Medusa's. Um, hair snakes are puppets, and, and then that's it that's for the it. entire. Everyone else episode. is just in makeup. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. kind of lame how they really reeled reeled in the puppets. Mm hmm, mm hmm. And I guess with the Greek myth, um, well, no, they have lots of monsters and stuff. Yeah. I guess the Minotaur, Minotaur, whatever was he was well, it's still a again n- not a puppet. No, I don't think other than the vulture that was like chirping at. Um, 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 oh my god. The guy. Uh, the father of... the Icarus's the, father. Yeah. Cause Starts that, with a D. Uh, d. Let's call him Dicarus. Okay. <laughs> Dicarus and Icarus? Icarus's father, yeah. Dicarus. Which, again, I didn't realize, too, until I saw the Greek myths. Because I always... As a kid, I always had, like, a vague understanding of Greek myths. Like, oh, don't fly too close to the sun, Icarus. And that's pretty much all you a lot of people know. Okay. And when you hear the actual story, you're like, oh, he was like a kid? And his father killed his, like, cousin and then wanted to escape an island. And the kid was, like, half retarded. Yeah, he was, like, a (laughs) hundred kinds of retarded. Right? And then he flies too close to the sign. Like, yeah, that's is that... Now I gotta research to see how close the Greek myth ones were. Because I know Uh. the... The fairy tale Sorry. ones are super close to the originals, but I don't I don't know about the Greek myth yeah. ones. No, I, I was always confused by Greek myth, and I think you mentioned this as well, just because there was always so many names. They all sound exactly so the same. so much lineage as well. Yeah. Son of this king and that king and... Yeah, I noticed a few times during the episodes where they'd be like, Dicarus and Flickerus and Pluperus and Mopolarus, all called King Vavarus. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone ends it's with an like is. Game of Thrones almost. Yeah. Just trying to keep everybody in, uh, <laughs> in, check. in check. You need a little notebook writing yeah. down who's oh, who. Yeah. 
And, but it uh, was interesting that the first episode of season two was Icarus mm-hmm. and Dicarus. Icarus and Dicarus. Um, which, um, so Dicarus actually made up the labyrinth that held yeah. the Minotaur. Mm-hmm. And then the last episode of season two was kind of the death of the Minotaur, yeah. right? So I wonder if they flipped those because they wanted the uh, to explain what the labyrinth was right off the bat. Makes sense. Instead, Because yeah. I don't know if in that final episode, I guess they do talk about the labyrinth, but you don't know any history or anything no, to it. No, no. And you don't really know how. So, stop, spoiler alert. Mm. The, um, the this is like 40 year old Joe. The king of Crete. Um, I don't remember what his name was. Uh, but Creterus. his son, Creterus. <laughs> the king of Crete's son was actually the Minotaur. Yeah. Um, and we don't know why. Yeah, we don't know how that happened. If the king, like, fucked a bull or something, we don't know, which and is completely plausible. We should have just paid attention to when we were kids and people were actually telling us these stories. <laughs> he's, he's um, in history this classes. This would have helped, yeah. Yeah. I think my cousin actually knows a lot of Greek history, so we could actually do, like, a call a, call a friend thing. And see. To bail say, ourselves out here. Hey, to we say, need some help right now? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I think, uh, I think appearing completely uh, oblivious to, yeah. <laughs> to facts is part of Space Action Podcast. That's how you do this shit, That's right? how we roll. Yeah, yeah. Like, who was that guy? That, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, there's a new storyteller coming out, they've announced, because Netflix apparently is now getting into, I think this, I don't think Disney got this stuff. I imagine, because oh. Netflix is now making a, a new Labyrinth series that's been announced. They're making the Dark Crystal series, and they've announced um, Neil Gaiman's The Storyteller series. I imagine that if Disney had their hands in this chapter of... Because um, Henson had, like, eight different companies. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know if Disney just bought the Muppets. And so, like, Jim Henson's Creature Shop, I don't think is yeah, Disney. Yeah, is maybe not part of it. Not part oh, of it. Interesting. But, um... I don't know about because Neil on the DVD for season two there was a trailer for a Neil Gaiman Jim Henson thing. What was it called? It was um, like bl- magic something fa- magic black. F- it, yeah, face. It was mirror magic. Magic mirror magic. Magic face. All I can mirror. think of is dance magic dance. Dance magic dance. <laughs> but that trailer looked horrible, and I actually remember when it came out, and I I may have watched it and completely forgotten what it is. So Neil Gaiman is hit or miss, mm. so I don't know how good it's going to be with him running the show. I hope it's great. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I wonder if it's going to be oddly creepy children's yeah. uh, But in twenty content. in 2019, what are they going to be able to get away with? Oh, I guess that's true. We are, yeah, that shit that we grew up on, it wouldn't pass these days, would it? What we watched yeah. today in, in the in the storyteller was like, this would never make it on television no, in 2019. Yeah. All of the uh, the moms I know, there's no way they'd let their kids no. watch that shit. And the, the, if it's not like... <coughs> Excuse me. If it's not horrifying, it's not the storyteller. I guess that, yeah, they go hand in hand. I think it's Jim Henson and, you know... Jim Henson had a dark streak. I wonder when yeah. he's going to get, like, Me Too'd. Oh, he, he's not going to get me too. He has too much. Like, when you look at his stuff, it's too fucking dark for him not to have a twisted side. You think so? I don't know. No. I'm spitballing here. But he's he's a dark motherfucker. <laughs> like, like, isn't Labyrinth all about a baby being stolen by a goblin king that wants yeah. to, like, suck his blood or some, something? Well, I think he steals the kid so that the sister will come and he can marry the sister. Because he wants to have sex with an underage girl. Yeah. Yeah. David Bowie, basically the description for Labyrinth is David Bowie wants to fuck a 15-year-old. So that that's, yeah, I don't know. I think, but he's the Goblin King, and he's fucking uh, hot in that movie, you know? If I, any 15-year-old would have fucked uh, David yeah. Bowie at, at the year that came out. But, um, I don't know, I and think... An eyeliner on one eye. I think, uh, I think Jim Hansen's got some skeletons in his closet. and they're so? I think they're Muppet skeletons, <clears throat> and I think they probably sing and dance, but... Don't say that, because some rando's going to start talking shit about Jim Henson now. <laughs> he's some... the last true blue, uh... Yeah, oh, I guess there's Mr. Rogers, he's still okay. Is he still okay? No, something happened with Mr. Rogers. No, there was someone else, when the, because... Oh, who was it? It was, I saw this on Twitter, and it made me really laugh of how sad people are. Because Mr. Rogers has the movie with Tom Hanks. And then some rando tweeted, like, uh, I don't remember the child's entertainer. I honestly don't. It was one of those silly pants, whatever, I, all these fucking children's entertainers. And, she, and some just random woman tweeted, like, don't ever make, like, a, a, a rose-colored glasses documentary about such and such. He's, he treated me and my son horribly once. Told, my, told me to fuck off to my face. And then that started trending, and everyone started, like, um, no one else had any stories. 
like of that. Course, yeah. So this person probably is just a shitty person, mm. and since children's entertainers are human, they probably was having a bad day. I was like, dude, lady, fuck off. Yeah. And now his name is being dragged through the mud because of it. Because hey, she got she got a lot of likes. Yeah. She had her five minutes of fame on Twitter. Thank God for the fucking internet. That's all I can say. Uh, remember when it was designed by scientists to share information instantly across the world? And now it's used to fuel outrage. Mm, well, that's progress for you. <laughs> that's progress. We went down a rabbit hole on the internet. We should we should get out of it before we tumble yeah, too really deeply. Quickly. Yeah, really quickly. Really quickly. Yeah, because I was just about to start Back going pedal. off. Going off about, like, children labor and iPhones and shit. No. And yeah, yeah. That's why people are angry at everything. Not that kind of podcast. <laughs> well, hey, we have to keep it nice and dark, right? It's the Jim Henson storyteller. <laughs> it's the theme. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You gotta keep it really creepy and weird and kind of sad. Oh, the other yeah. episode that Jim Henson directed was... Um, the the one about the giant that with a with a wasp nest for a heart. Oh yeah. Which again was really sad. Um, what was that one called? Uh, God, we should have brought it down with us. Damn. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, please have a second window open with Wikipedia <laughs> on, on Jim Henson's The Storyteller. It was um the final episode, I think, wasn't it? So he directed uh fear um, um the soldier in death. Which was like, and again, the, the orders, the, the yeah. orders always different. If you go on Wikipedia, the order of episodes is different than like the original airing episodes and the episodes on the DVD. They're all oh, different okay. ordered. Yeah, yeah. So I, the first season that's fine because they're all standalone. But the second season, I think we noticed it because of the story, just of because of that beginning little bit flying in a labyrinth. Yeah, because in the first intro. episode there was like, why is he in the labyrinth? Yeah, why is he yeah, walking? So around? many questions. Yeah, why is he? Why is it another two thousand years before that dog is invented? <laughs> <laughs> But that one was fucked up, too, because it was about a little kid who trusted a giant Mm -hmm. who was encaged in his father, a prince, and is caged up in his father's castle's Mm -hmm. dungeon. Yep. And he trusts him because he feels sorry for him, but the giant has no heart because it's a wasp's nest. And he breaks out and starts murdering everyone and takes off. And so this little princeling's older brothers go one by one to try and kill the giant and just never come back. And so then he goes, and like all fairy tales, along his adventure, he gets exactly what he needs to complete his adventure. Mm-hmm. He saves a, a, a fish. Yep. He, a bird was stepped on and had yep. his wing broken. And then he a, he let a wolf eat his dead horse, yep. first, <laughs> which is pretty messed up. Yeah, and, and he has uh, animal friends for the, yeah. the rest of his journey. Because the wolf lets him ride him, yep. which is adorable, seeing this like full-sized person on a tiny little wolf puppet. Mm-hmm. And then the bird and the fish help him help find him get. the Oh, yeah, because he, he finds the, the giant. giant and he starts trying to trick him to find out where his heart is. Yeah. Because the little kid's plan is to give the giant back his heart because he knows once the giant has his heart again... He won't be a dick. He won't be a dick anymore. Yeah. And so the, all his animal friends help him get the heart. He gets back and the giant says, just give me my heart and I'll turn your friend... Oh, yeah, because his brothers were turned to stone by the giant. Yeah. And he says, I'll turn your brothers back. And as soon as his brothers turn back into people, they grab the heart and just squish it because it's an egg. It is, yeah. And he, he squishes it and the giant just dies at the end. And you're like, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And then the dog's like, that's so sad. <laughs> he would have been good after yeah. that. He could have reformed. Yeah. <laughs> that dog really makes me want that breed of dog. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a dog person and I want that dog. And the dog's name on the show was purely dog. It was dog. Yeah, yeah. I want a female dog because I think male dogs are dicks, literally and figuratively, and uh, it's the testosterone, man. I don't like them. Ah, oh, man. Male dogs are great. I like uh, male cats and female dogs, I think, are the, are the way to go. Cause, so sexist. Yeah, no, because lady dogs are not aggressive, testosterone-filled assholes, and boy cats don't have the shitty competition that felines have because in nature there's usually one male and a pride of females, so they compete with each other more. I'm pretty sure everybody's eye rolling you right now. No, everybody listening. To no, this. I think everyone's going like, "Yeah, male cats are awesome. Female cats are bitches. <laughs> female cat, female dogs are awesome. Mm-hmm. Male dogs are jerks." Well, I have a male dog and a female cat. Yeah, and how and many? I love them both how many times dearly. does he bit you? <laughs> it's dude. <laughs> Sam's dog is 308 years old, <laughs> blind and deaf, but when he was younger, he was an angry, angry little boy. He was a little tyrant, yeah. He was an angry little yeah. dog. He, he grew up in rough circumstances, though. He was and an And that's no excuse, dog. yeah, but, you know. Not he's, by he's you. He's got a backstory. You got him out of the abuse. Yeah. And so he was a little yeah. fucked up from it. Yeah. He, he was a lot fucked up. Yeah. But... 
you know what? We had a good, uh, <laughs> good a good eighteen eight, years. Eighteen years. Thus far. Oh, he's yeah. he's uh, he's stinky. He keeps me on my toes. Yeah. And he's got raging diarrhea every time you turn around. Oh, this went from dark to just disgusting. <laughs> Back to Jim Henson. All the comments will be like, just put him down. <laughs> he's not done yet, guys. He's still good. He's still good. <laughs> he um, still walks for like an hour a day. Did you Did you ever watch Dark Crystal? I watched little bits and pieces of it, um, but I did not watch it from end to end that I can recall because I don't remember the storyline whatsoever. And I think you got me to watch a couple of... YouTube clips of it. Well, yeah, because I as didn't a, remember it. As a kid, I didn't like it. I didn't yeah. get it. I couldn't. I couldn't make that connection to puppets. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, aside from comedy, like the yeah, right. It's as soon as they went dramatic, I, I, my eyes glazed over as a kid. And I think as a kid, the only thing that appealed to me that was Jim Henson was the Muppet Show. Was the Muppet Kermit Show the Frog? Yeah, because it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. But then, as an adult, I went back and I hated Labyrinth as a kid. I, just, I loved. Labyrinth. I didn't get it, yeah. and now I know why. By watching the Labyrinth trailer, I didn't realize George Lucas was a big part of Labyrinth. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there it is. There it is. Because I went back and rewatched them both, and I was like, Dark Crystal is fucking amazing. Yeah. I love the Dark Crystal. I still hate Labyrinth. Mm -hmm. I really do. And I think it's George Lucas. I think his stink is like dude's breath. It's just, it's, it's omnipresent and ruins everything it touches. See, and... And I know that George Lucas wise, we've all got, you know, all our got own our issues. kind of thing. But I saw Ooh. Ewoks when I was a kid and I fucking loved it. Oh, Return and, of the Jedi? Yeah. And um the Ewoks are very reminiscent, I think, of the of the puppet characters you see in the Labyrinth. And, you know, all the so it's bog, kinda Boglins or whatever the hell they're called. Yeah, I, I just wasn't... everything in the Labyrinth. Right? I think I accidentally referenced an eighties toy, Boglins, weren't they? Like those rubber evil face things with the two arms and the tail, and you stuck your hand up and made their mouth move. I think those oh, are called boglins. I didn't know they had a name. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, even as a kid, I remember not liking the Ewoks. As a kid, I really would always fast forward to just Luke and Vader fighting at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was kind of what I enjoyed. Yeah. Then I think probably because I watched things like The Storyteller and Stanley Kubrick movies too young. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Just, you're not a good representation of kids. No, it, no. I, it messed me the hell you were up. Like, you're a 90 year old man now yeah. and a 30 some odd guy. When I was body, like 10, but... I was having existential crises yeah. about how, like, <laughs> well, if there's nothing after death, that's terrifying. But if there's something that goes on forever, that's equally terrifying. <laughs> there's no good solution here. So. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jim Henson. Thank you for doing that. But yeah. no, I, I, to go back to what I said at the very beginning of the podcast, I totally was off of Jim Henson after he died. Yeah. It was like uh, someone punched me in the heart when I heard Jim Henson died as a I little know. kid. And yeah. I was like, I just go to watch the Fraggles or something. I was like, I don't want to anymore. Yeah. It was, I was going through. Oh, pumpkin. Yeah. It was, going, oh. <laughs> it was like uh, grief or something. I was like, yeah. I don't want to anymore. I don't want to watch it. It's not the same anymore. Yeah. And didn't they do an episode of something where they talked about death? And then, like... Yeah, I think Kermit did that. Kermit came out yeah. at the very, very end, and it was Brian Henson. And it was like, oh, you sound weird. And I just couldn't I couldn't get yeah. into it. Yeah. Uh, it was a really sad day. And I, I I don't know where I was when I found it. It's not like 9-11. No. But, um, but I can still remember just that, that sense of loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was... And it was really just from The Muppet Show. Yeah. Um, because I at didn't Fraggle know Rock. His, his... Yeah. His I was, plethora of stuff yeah. I was not familiar with at all. I was obsessed with Fraggle Rock. Oh, yeah. As I was a little it. kid. Yeah. I really yeah. liked the, uh, I think that's what made me such a slacker. So I was always like, those loser dozers, <laughs> go take their little weird crystal sticks and eat them, boys. It's all about dancing the days away. Thanks, Jim or, Henson. That was well done. Well or done. Dance your cares away, I should say. <laughs> like, look at those losers working their cares away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, thanks, Jim. You made a whole generation of slackers. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> we get that Ghost Hunter show to see if we can say, get them to say you're welcome. Get a seance going to see if we can channel Jim Henson. Can you imagine? Like that, is, is that, I've got to find out if that's real, because that seems in such horrible taste to do a Ghost Hunter show looking for Jim Henson. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Um, was Frank Oz there doing the piggy voice, waiting to hear, like, oh, hey, you <laughs> in the background? It's 
horrifying. Um, but that seance is not happening at my house. That can happen at your house. Oh, come on. You got, like, a poon job on your house. A pooja. Yeah. Poon job. They both sound equally hilarious. Dude, I'm sorry. Dude, you're dating a brown chick. You need to learn the words <laughs> at this point, all right? Whatever. Pooja. Poo job. Yes, there you go. I right, fine. <laughs> Well, you got you got a poop job on your house, so poojas wear off after so many years. How can that wear off, dude? This is what the priest tells me. Okay, <laughs> I question that uh, any religion where it's like, okay, this blessing wears off after a while. Yeah, no, it's just like a good luck thing. Because I think my family specifically, we're not very religious. We're a lot more superstitious. Mm. And everybody listening to this, judge me as you will, but we do things because. Um, bad things may or may not happen if you don't do these things, right? Allow me. Send her back. Send her back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I got a Canada card, yo. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not religious either. And I don't believe in luck. Mm. Uh, like curses and things. I just, yeah. I just can't get behind it. I think... I think we like we were at my brother's the other night last mm-hmm. night, yeah, and um, talking about um, the terror. So um, the the ship searching for the Northwest Passage. And apparently, there's a book mm-hmm. about the what if happened to it, and I think that's a perfect microcosm for superstition and reality. I mentioned it last night. Of uh, the the what if book is like okay, these guys are looking for the Northwest Passage, and then they saw. Like an Inuit man and killed him and then it unleashed the spirit of a Wendigo who hunted them down one by one. And then the truth ended up being they died from lead poisoning. <laughs> I think that's a perfect microcosm. Well, two for sure died of lead poisoning. The well, other all, ones we're not sure. They all disappeared. They all disappeared. But we only know that two for sure died of lead poisoning. And yeah. it was because they had moved from taking... Um, like uh, preserved food oh, to canning food. Canning food with lead seals. Yeah, and the soldering on the on the tin can was lead. Mm. And so the lead just leached into their beef and gravy or whatever the hell it was they were beef. eating. Everything and, ends up being uh, boring. Everything ends up being boring. <laughs> The the looking up in the sky and going, God is 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 punishing you for staring into his face by blinding you and if you if you stay in the presence of God too long you'll you will die of exposure to God. Oh no, it's just it's the sun. Yeah, it's a ball. It's, of, it's a ball of hydrogen. S S P F. Yeah, so it's objectively, even though like it's both objectively like amazing and boring at the same time because we make it way too fascinating, and then you're like a ball of hydrogen burning in space is incredibly fascinating. But compared to the stories we made up, it's super boring. <laughs> well, and I guess when you explain anything and you understand the way it works, the it the boring. mystery is gone. Yeah. And it's, you know. Like, oh, that's it? That's why I think the meaning of life is going to make, if anyone, and anyone ever discovers the meaning of life, the response is going to be, what, really? Oh. That's it? Mm. <laughs> We're, we're like we're a bacteria growing on a super giant dog's butt yeah like oh that's objectively fascinating but come on kind of boring compared to what we came up with when i was a kid um i remember we would be sitting in traffic and i would always just <clears throat> hope that um the giant whose play table we were sitting on would just pick up our car and move us to just to get out of traffic yeah so i always thought that we were the playthings of a giant there was a giant somewhere I like to think uh, that. Uh, oh wait, what was the fun? Actually, I don't want to give that away because I want to turn that into a story someday. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go down. With that. I'll tell you later. Oh okay. But um, I don't want to give it away and then some douchebags listening to the podcast and then hey, I'm gonna take that, just run with it. But um, hey, that giant story is copyright. <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> um, I'll share the story though for enough money. I was just always hoping there was uh, Jim Henson's hand was up my ass. Oh. Yeah. 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 And that, that, um, so going back to the storyteller, which is what we're supposed to be talking about, mm-hmm. I guess. We get, if we're um, going to avoid copyright infringement for using the theme, we got to fucking talk about it for the majority <laughs> of the podcast. I learned that the hard way. Um, <laughs> uh, just the, the, the puppetry, right? Um, like I'm just thinking of the dog. So you, you always saw the dog and he was sitting on a stone floor yeah. and he was rolling around and all this fun stuff. And obviously it was just how they were holding the camera that you couldn't see the guy's 
hand. Oh yeah, they would build a, fa- a false floor, and it was actually Brian Henson operating him. Oh yeah, under yeah. Under a false floor, yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. They should go back to making movies like that. No, yeah. When the uh, the lion showed up, I remember I said to you, I was like, that should have been the live action Lion King movie. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. who gives? Like honestly, fuck that movie. A bunch of expressionless lions walking around recreating shot for shot one of the most colorful, expressive yeah. animated films Agreed. ever. Yeah. How cool would it have been if they'd used like. 21st century technology puppets. Yeah. They would have looked amazing. Yeah. Like the Vogons in Hitchhiker's Guide, I think, was the last big uh, Jim Henson undertaking. I guess now until Dark Crystal series the coming re- out. Remake, yeah. The remake. And they looked they, like there were times where you're like, is it just real? Because is, there's no uncanny valley. There's no bullshit CGI that's making me think it's animated. Yeah. It just looks It just real. blends into the story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They, yeah. uh, that would be amazing. Can you imagine a f- like a Jim Henson's The Lion King? It would be the greatest thing it ever. It would. It totally would. That would have been really, and that would have justified a remake too, because mm-hmm. you're doing something completely new and different with yeah. the material. Yeah, and I mean they did the the stage production of The Lion King, right? So you think they'd be open to that? To kind something. Of thing. I think the stage was just a lot of people in outfits yeah, and like it totally was things on sticks and things. But, right? but people, I didn't see it, and, but people yeah. said so many good things about it that it was fantastic, and you know the, the oh, costumes wait. were great. Speaking of plays and movies, did you see the trailer for Cats? No, I did not. It is... The, anyone listening right now, if you haven't seen the trailer for the live-action Cats that premiered at Comic-Con, go Google it and watch it. It is unadulterated nightmare fuel. Oh, really? It is... Um, uh, I guess it's a bunch of people dressed up as cats. No, yeah. it's oh. 100% animated, but it's motion capture um, one-to-one to the actor's real-life computer animation like oh. Gollum and Lord of the Rings okay, yeah, or yeah. like the apes from Planet of the Apes yeah. but it's just their faces so it's like Judy Dench looking like she's wearing tights uh, in a cat outfit but then you're looking like oh no it's a CGI du- Judy Dench's face made to look like the cat outfit is just her skin so they do look like little people can I ask what's the point of this I, I th- honestly I think it's a demo reel for this technology because um, it's a new a new form of motion capture, so I kind of feel like like some. Why they, not just wear the fucking suit? I don't get it at all either. If you're going to animate it, make them cats. Yeah. Um. So if you and if you're just making them humans in cat suits but animated, I I honestly do think it's a giant two hour demo reel. They were like, okay, we have this new technology, and we're going to get the rights to cats, and we're going to and let's use just that waste as, a bunch of money. Yeah, it's going to be a name recognition vehicle to show off this tech mm. uh, in order to give it to get other companies on board. Wow. I kind of is what it feels like to me. I can't. I Who's don't know. making the movie? No idea. No idea. No idea. But James Corden is in it, so I will never see it because James Corden is like a. Th- thorn in my eyeball i can't stand him so much why is this i don't know oh. it's just one of those things but there's something about him that oh. irritates the fuck out of me okay and i was so happy to find out that um people like english people are like oh please take james corden <laughs> we hate him and i'm like yeah thank you because mm-hmm. i hate him as well and he has like 50 million views oh. singing karaoke in a car with some fucking celebrity okay and it infuriates me because he's just the worst. He likes to sing in cars. He's I mean, so irritating. I can't I, stand him. I haven't him. watched him <laughs> enough just, to be able to comment. Again, it's nothing he does. It's not like he's out killing puppies or voting for Trump or something. It's mm. just that his his personality is like nails on a chalkboard to me. Oh, okay. I can't stand him. I kind of get that way when I have to look at uh, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell? Yeah. He kind of makes... So I have this um, this vein in my forehead, and when I get irritated, like aggravated, you know my vein. Can we start calling that the the, the Ferrell? The Ferrell? <laughs> well, it's kind of the Carson, too. I'm not going to lie. It's mostly the Carson, <laughs> but it's also the Ferrell. Um, I like Anchorman and Step Brothers. That's it. I, I didn't have the patience for Step Brothers. I did enjoy Anchorman, but there was a lot of other things going on. It wasn't just the Will Ferrell show. Yeah, I never liked him on SNL. I yeah. always would get, I would mm. like, because I stopped watching SNL a long time ago, yeah. but he was on at the point when I was still watching it, and I would always be like, oh, going to go make a sandwich or something yeah, during the I sketch. essentially stopped laughing mm. when I was watching Saturday Night Live. It just kind of turned into yeah. just something on in the background. It's like The Simpsons. It's been just crap for so long yeah. that it's like, yeah. why, like, I don't know what your legacy is going to be in a hundred years. I don't know what it's like now, because honestly, I just haven't gone back to watch it. Uh, but... a, a, bear, a friend of ours, Barry, he sends Snapchats of almost the entire fucking episode every week. <laughs> 
And uh, every time I'm like, ugh, and I'll watch like two, and they're just irritating me, and then I just skip the rest because yeah. it's so bad. But Barry's just, you know, he's he's committed to the show now. He's committed. I guess it's he's like just, the yeah. final season of Game of Thrones. You have to watch it now, even though there's no end in sight yeah. for Saturday yeah, yeah. Live. You know, you're not going to be fucking satisfied. Just stuck. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. I. I think the only reason that I like, like, because Anchorman is just such a weird beast. It's such. It is bizarro comedy that I. Yeah. I just appreciate. It. And I remember it was back in school when it came out. I was in school and we were like high as shit mm-hmm. going to see the movie, and that we were just burst. Like I remember my jaw being in pain of yeah. laughing at it. So drugs, marijuana helps. It's legal in Canada now, so marijuana definitely helps with Anchorman. Um, in terms of Step Brothers, I think that's the only vehicle he's ever done where his adult man-child comedy works. Okay. Because it's literally about two man-children mm. and un- unable unable to, like, grow up, you know, like, to mentally progress beyond, like, 12. So he always plays that stupid man-child character. Does, and in, yeah. And I think the only time it ever worked was Step Brothers. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, it's funny. And John C. Riley is amazing. So, so John C. Riley is like some kind of crazy theatrical yeah, actor, right? He's, a, he's awesome. Yeah. Um, what was I watching? And he actually had like a real role in it. Like he was. That's most. Like I think he only really does a comedy with Will Ferrell. Okay. And then weirdly enough, the King Kong movie. He'll every once in a while dip into comedy. Okay. But I was. I think he's one, like a dramatic actor. He's a he's a yeah. professionally trained dramatic huh. actor. Yeah. I think one of his first big roles. <coughs> I, I again, if I had IMDb up, but the first role I know him from is mm-hmm. Boogie Nights. Mm, and he's awesome mm-hmm, in Boogie Nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he was in, oh, what was he in? Laurel and Hardy movie? The, he was, I never saw that. That was Steve Coogan. It just came out. I didn't oh, okay. see it. It looked like it looked like the kind of movie your grandma will see on TNT in oh, the yeah. afternoon and be yeah, like, that yeah. was a good movie. Yeah. Uh, That's kind of what it feels like. But, uh, I don't know. It might be Stan. What was Laurel and Hardy's first name? Stan something? And it was Stan and Ollie. That's what the sh- movie was called. Oh, okay. And he was in something else, too. None of this has anything to do with Storyteller. No, it doesn't at all. Yeah, Jim Henson's a storyteller. So there's a new Storyteller coming out. I imagine that there's going to be Storyteller retrospectives and and YouTube videos aplenty soon because the new series is coming out. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we looked into it because we were like, we want a little bit of information about the Storyteller to actually have some facts to talk about. There's nothing out there. And like I imagine, like we're not in a position to be calling up the creators of the storytelling no. game behind the scenes info, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the internet offers very little in the ways of like we don't know why Michael Gambon was the storyteller in season two, and John Hurt left. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. There was three years between seasons, because um, eighty seven was season one and ninety was season two, and Jim Henson had died. And it was a whole. Um, and season two was four episodes. It was only four episodes because yeah. on the BBC, so they they do do smaller oh, seasons. Oh, I see. Okay. So I think the storyteller actually was two seasons. I think it was four and five, four episodes and five episodes. Oh, for what we know as season as, one. What we know as just the storyteller. Okay. Because when you buy it, it's called the complete series. Oh, and it's I nine see. episodes. Okay. And then it's a completely different beast is season two. Mm-hmm. But um, we don't know why, why, um, why, why he was replaced, why um, um, John Hurt was replaced. We don't know why the original creator only was an executive producer on the second series, mm. on, on the Greek myth series. We don't know this, and the internet won't answer our questions. So we kind of had to come into the podcast blind and hope that uh, in the next few months or years, until the Neil Gaiman episode or series comes out, I'm sure all these questions will be answered. When is it coming out? Do you know? Mm-hmm. They've just announced it. Oh, okay. I don't think they've put any dates on it yet. Okay. And in more professional uh, YouTubers can go down the rabbit hole of calling people yeah. to interview yeah, yeah. and find out exactly what happened. And then we'll do a follow-up podcast. <laughs> I do hope that they stick to um, uh, what I saw in season one with the storytelling as well as the puppeteering mm-hmm. and, you More know, puppets. The less More puppets, puppets than for sure. why is it Jim Henson's storyteller if you... Like, I, th- I honestly, thinking about it, I think it was just the the birds and the fish from the Icarus episode. Or not the Icarus episode, the, um... Yeah, the Icarus episode, the, the vultures. The vultures, I think it was there just, was no fish. There was no fish. I was yeah. thinking back to the season one, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it, I think just the vultures were full puppets. Yeah. Everything else was, like, people with Medusa's puppet. Medusa's head was kind of cool. Because it was still it was an a actor, person. though, yeah. Yeah, but the, the hair, the snakes in the hair were totally, like, free-flowing yeah. kind of... 
But I don't know. That was I, I, don't, cool. I don't think that counts as a puppet, though. No, I I agree with or you. Or is a Jim Henson Muppet? I guess Muppets are not puppets because he makes the distinction of Muppets are like Kermit and the gang, and then creatures. Like the dog is not a Muppet; he's a creature. He's a creature. Jim right. Henson creature. Yeah. So there are no creatures in season two. Yeah, yeah. And I, I I found season two to be a little more gray and just meh. It was very depressing. I watched it because it was season two. Yeah. So that was it. I guess there's no real way to avoid being horribly depressing when making Greek mythology true but the same is kind of true the first season yeah um but but again really good storytelling i did i did really enjoy it because a lot of the stories i'd never heard before Uh and just finding those little nuggets in like the cinderella and the the beauty and the beast which forgive us we we have no idea what the the episode titles were yeah but um call it just cinderella yeah (laughs) and beauty and the beast he was a hedgehog right or was that hans the hedgehog was hans the hedgehog yeah and then she she kept throwing his she threw his hedgehog fur into the fire and yeah. he freaked out that was horrifying it was it there were so many horrifying things in yeah there. anyways um thank you guys for listening we'll be dc and i will be back to do stranger things we promised you guys stranger things a while ago we'll get to that eventually i'm not sure what's coming up next is because as i said dc's on vacation but thanks for being the special guest star this week sam thanks for having me chris yeah you're welcome um, you now owe me favors of the uh, mm. dirty variety in order, because I let you on the show. There's a casting couch, couch process to Space Action Podcast. Um, uh, so yeah, so we'll be back at some point, guys. And so um, thank you for listening. And uh, everything we do can be found at spaceactionheroes.com. So please check that out. And like liking this video would be great. And sharing this video would be great. And subscribing we'll be to this stuff. Yeah, it would be better. And subscribing to things would be great. And other than that, we will see you in the future! Say goodnight, Sam. Goodnight, Sam. When people told themselves their past with stories, explained their present with stories, foretold the future with stories, the best place by the fire was kept for... The Storyteller.